Hi everybody, it's Peter Zalem's Green Flicks Adventure 8. Welcome to another video. I have Raquel and I'll be showing you guys how to do a natural look for your photo shoots. seen my videos if you actually if you haven't already subscribed to my channel then do press subscribe press notifications you'll be notified when the next <laughs> video is out but if you're regular to my channel you know that my channel is in adventure travel and also photography and photographing people uh, without a doubt my favorite genre I've recently uh, done a number of model shoots and one of the challenges in shooting models this is from my perspective as well as from the model is applying makeup and depending on your skill level it you know, depends on what you actually get and how complementary that is to the photo shoot okay maybe tell me a bit about yourself uh, Raquel so I'm 20 years old always yep. lived on the central coast and in high school I first did my vet course which was a makeup course and through there I joined my family business with my sister and my mum, Stillwater Beauty, in uh, beauty therapy. So ever since I've been a beauty therapist and my passion is makeup. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's, you're based in Gosford or? Uh, Greenpoint. Greenpoint. Yeah. That's in the Central Coast. That's in the Central Coast, yeah. yes. It's about 15 minutes away from And Gosford. do people come to your studio or do you go to their place? or you take go to events and things like that? Yeah, so it's a bit of both. During yeah. the week, I run only salon-based, yeah. and then on the weekends and Mondays, I do mobile. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, there'll be some links in the video uh, where you can contact Raquel uh, if you need some makeup services, uh, as well as details will be in the description of the video. We'll uh, reposition the camera. We'll do a sort of a close-up on... Um, Raquel as she uh, goes through all the steps and I'll basically get out of the picture. It'll be, it'll be all you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well besides uh, Raquel's skills in makeup, um, she's also a budding model and we're hoping to maybe then do some a photo shoot as well. You're a keen motorcyclist? Yes. <laughs> okay. As you know, as I am. And we've got a choice of a motorcycles here as well, as well, so we might use a Triumph as a prop for Raquel as well. <laughs> We're going to be doing a natural look of how you would do for a photo shoot. All right, today I've just got a few products that I would think most of you models would have at home. So I've got today a moisturizer, which will act as a great primer. We've got a concealer, a eyebrow powder, a foundation, bronzer, mascara, lip liner. I've got some brushes, a translucent powder, blush, and a setting spray. And that's all we'll need for today's look. So first thing you wanna do is start off with a moisturizer. Applying that all over your face. This is super important to get a good base for your makeup. Making sure to bring all products down your neck. All right, next thing we're gonna to want to use is a concealer. Now you're just gonna to wanna to apply this in your problematic areas. So for me today, it's my under eyes and my acne. How important is lighting when you're doing your makeup? It's super important, you know. It's great to have good lighting and natural lighting because therefore you'll be able to see all of the true colours. If you're using quite a bright light, it can dull you out and when you walk into natural lighting, all of a sudden your colours are so much more brighter than what you first applied it in that lighting. So it's super important to have good lighting when doing your makeup. So we're using studio photographic lighting here um, so that 
Kelvin temperature is 5,000 degrees, I believe. And uh, if you're using flash photography, that's also 5,000 degrees. So it's going to be the same uh, white balance. So applying makeup to the face, uh, I guess you've got to take into consideration your skin colour overall as well. Absolutely. Also your tone. So us, we either have a warm tone or a cool tone. And the great way to figure out if you're warm toned or cool toned is to see if your veins. You'll see cool toned people have blue veins. If you're warm toned, you're most likely to have purple or green veins. And that will be able to help you with picking what products you need. All right, we're gonna to wanna to let that sit for two minutes. And while we let that sit, we'll go on with the eyebrows. Now, eyebrows are super important because they're one of your main features of your face. And what you want is a very structural brow. It doesn't need to be complicated. All we're doing is adding a little bit of color to the structure and shape you already have. So you're just wanting to pick up a little bit of the powder and applying it to the back of your eyebrows to define them a bit more. And with the rest of the powder that's on your brush, you're just going to want to brush that through the front to diffuse it. And it's nothing complicated. It's just a little bit of eyebrow powder on the ends of the brows. And where have you learnt your skills over the years? Did you always have an interest? Is it just something that most women have an interest in makeup? <laughs> <laughs> so my mum was a makeup artist and she would do fashion walks, she would do weddings and I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And as a teenager growing up, I just got into it, doing a little bit here and there. And when I went to high school, they gave me um, the opportunity to do a makeup course as one of my subjects. So that's called a vet course here in New South Wales, Australia. And basically you just apply for that and once, once a day, every week, you would go and learn how to do makeup or another course of your choice. But yeah. Nice. Next we're going to do foundation. What I'm using here today is the Krylon HD foundation. I would recommend a professional photography foundation, but if you, but any full coverage foundation will do. With, um, with makeup, um, I guess you, it's important to work out makeup that's, that doesn't interact with your skin. Absolutely. So a lot of us have different skin types. You'll see you either have dry, normal or oily. And with me, I've got quite a combination. That meaning I have oily in my T-zone and then it's dry right around here. So a lot of makeup you will see on the bottles if it's suited for dry, oily or neutral. So you'll just have a look. If you have a bit of excess oil on your face, you're most likely wanting to use a foundation that is compatible for oily skin and vice versa with dry and normal. Another, another question. On that. <laughs> That's alright. Um, when you, you know, whether you're in going to an event or something, or if you are in a photo shoot, then the yep. temperatures can vary substantially. Absolutely. Studios can be quite warm, or they can be cold, or whatever. Um, what sort of tolerance does makeup have, or do you have to, that change? That depends on the type of makeup you're using again. It truly depends. Today I'll be showing you how to set your makeup and the best, yeah. and that will be resistant to heat, sweat, and other outside environment. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So I'm just blending out this concealer a little bit, just to buff out the edges. Because we've let it dry, it's going to give us the maximum coverage. You have a number of brushes. Depending yes, on what you're doing. Yeah. multiple brushes. I'm yeah. just using a small concealer brush. Do you prefer to do your own makeup or have other people apply makeup to you? I prefer to do my own makeup. I notice a lot of people 
have preference and depending you will either find a makeup artist that is within your preference and they do it a certain way how you like it or you have the skills and you will do it the certain way you like it. I do sometimes like to sit back and be pampered and let someone else do my makeup but I can be a little bit picky. Yeah. <laughs> I know most girls can be as well. Does your studio do, is it a hair salon as well? No, so it's, we don't do hair, we just do yeah. makeup and beauty treatments really. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I'm doing with the foundation, I'm wanting to get a cover all over the brush. Make sure the product is completely all over the brush. And you're gonna to want to start in your most problematic area. That's gonna give you the most coverage. So where I'm wanting the most coverage today is on my acne. So I will be starting right here. And it does look a little bit white light on the face, but that's because it matches beautifully with my neck. You'll find that your face can be quite darker than your neck and your torso. That's why you want to always colour match your foundation to your neck or your décolletage. So the neck will be a tone somewhere in between your face and your body? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to stipple this on. I can see the transformation already. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, people come to you, do they tend to do their makeup before they do their hair or do their hair first? So you see a lot of the times that people actually get their hair done first, depending if you're doing more of a out look with your hair out. Um, it's best to do your hair afterwards as us makeup artists might tie your hair back and accidentally ruin that. Um, it's really down to preference and availability of your makeup artist and your hairstylist. It's quite time consuming makeup. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Worth it. It's worth it, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like building a house, isn't it? You want to get the foundations right before you do anything else. Exactly. Mm. Your base products are your most important. Yeah. You want your skin to look like skin. Because at some stage you'll be taking all this off, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's also an important stage, isn't it? You have to, whatever you apply, you have to work out how you're going to take off again. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And I guess depending what you're using to take it off can also affect your skin, so... Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot of... Uh, I guess most people will then would have to go a bit of trial and error with different makeup products to work out. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of the places you buy makeup, there's lovely girls to assist you and help colour match you and find the right product that is going to complement you the best but it's quite universal. You might go shopping online and you might just have to trial and trial and trial until you find the right products that complement you the best. Because everybody is different. There is no makeup that's one fit for all, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, now we've got the foundation on. I'm just gonna go in with some contour to really define and bring back color to my face. I am going to add some to the top. This will help reduce the size of my forehead in pictures and also just make it look like I've seen the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So being fair skin, I guess you would go red in the sun, would it? Absolutely. Yeah. I go red in the sun or I get lots of freckles. <laughs> From a uh, photography point of view, there is, a, with different tones of skin, there is some uh, latitude in post-processing that we can do with skin colour, tone. But it's always nice to get it right um, so that you don't have to do the editing afterwards. Absolutely. I've chosen today a warm coloured contour. This is to bring more warmth into my cool skin. Next, I'm going to be contouring my cheeks and you're going to want to go from the top of your ear and you're going to want to try to go here, but we'll only end till like here. You're going to go right under your natural cheekbone. I go back in with my foundation just to dull that out a little bit. Repeat the same on the other side. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a YouTube channel yourself? Or? I don't. So I've only just started social media. Yeah. I've been a makeup artist for six years, but I've only just brought myself to social media. It's brought me so many opportunities and I'm still learning, but I'll be getting there. I'll be making a YouTube channel once I figure it all out. and. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Tissues, just in case. Thank you. I'm quite sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. So blush is the, uh, a brighter colour to highlight? So this is a pink tone and this is what's going to bring colour back to your face. Now you can't be afraid with how much you put on because the camera is going to dull the blush out a lot. So too, if you want to have your blush seen in photography, then go crazy with it. But today we're doing a bit more of a natural look, so I'm not going to do too much today. And you're going to want to start on the apple of your cheek, which is this part right here, because this is where you're going to want the most pigment. And you're just going to diffuse that out, make sure it's all blended into your base makeup. best to always do stippling motions. This will help not pick up any of the products that's underneath. Stippling motion is... A stippling. stippling. It's stippling. like a tattoo gun. The okay. Very yep. fast... Motion. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm going to grab a bit of highlight. This is a pink highlight. And I'm going to put it where the natural light will hit the top of my cheekbone. So highlight brings features of your face forward, where contour, what we just did, pushes features of your face backwards. So I'll just be applying that to my cheekbones. Because I want them to appear a little bit more prominent. Let that sit on the face for a little bit and we'll move on to eyes. So you're going to want to go back into your eyes with a concealer or an eyeshadow base. 
Today I've just got a concealer to use. I'm just going to clean up the bottom of my brow. blend it all over my eye. So with the socials now, you've got Instagram and Facebook? I've got Instagram and I've got a TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, okay. That's all at the moment. Do you, which is, do you find more useful for you? Instagram, I find, is the most useful platform for me. Yeah. I'm just grabbing a bigger brush to blend this out a bit quicker. How do people choose makeup artists? Is it just through word of mouth or...? So various of things. It can be through word of mouth, social media, um, online just browsing on Google or it, like they might drive past and see a sign or the, the salon and call up. So various of ways, I would say more social media based these days. A lot more people like to see portfolios and yeah, and they reach out to the artists and make it happen. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back in with my contour and I'm just going to apply a little bit of this onto the eyes. So I'm just going in where my crease is with a big brush and I'm going to buff that out. So the colour you choose here would be very dependent on your skin colour again, wouldn't it? Absolutely. You could use either a bronzer or a contour. Uh, with me, I like to use a very warm bronzer slash contour. Just because I have quite pale skin, I don't have much depth. Yeah, so I choose a more warmer bronzer to give me a bit more colour to my face. Since I'm very pale, there isn't much. I'm wanting to bring the life back. Is there much difference in the style of natural look from country to country? Oh, absolutely. Every different um, ethnicity needs different things. So I was thinking more so the Caucasian, I suppose, yeah. uh, English ver version of what they think looks good versus American versus Australian. I personally think it's depending on their trends, what is trending over there makeup wise. Because I've noticed on social media that every country has different trends and that really influences how they do their makeup and what products they use. Just going to lighten that up a bit. So I'm going back in with my foundation brush. All right, next is one of the most important steps. We're going to set the face. So you're wanting to grab yourself a translucent powder, a pressed powder, or even a powdered foundation. They will all do the same thing. So, I'm going to just grab a bit on my brush and set my under eyes first. So that's basically taking any moisture out of the makeup? Absolutely, it's going to take any of the moisture out and all of the oils as well. You're going to want to really press and diffuse this into the skin, making sure you're not applying too much of it. It's also good to apply it where you sweat the most, it will also help absorb 
make us sweat as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just applying it in places where I want to dull down the shine a bit. And I also use this to clean up my bronzer. Right, so temperature in the studio right now is 26.5 degrees Celsius. Humidity is 72%. <laughs> not, that, not that. Do you relate to those temperatures at all or humidity? Oh, it's there, so humid. It is humid, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't feel hot. It just feels humid, really, yeah. to me. Yeah, it is humid. So I'm going to let that sit in my skin for a bit. Next, I'm going to grab a nude lip liner. And I'm just going to line my lips. Nude is a brand or is it...? So it's a more neutral colour, something that is a natural lip colour. Right, okay. <laughs> So you can make your lips a little bit larger, is that more defined? Uh, more defined, you can make them larger, but I just prefer to make them a little bit more defined. Now if you have quite dry lips, you're going to want to apply a lip balm to do this, but my lips are already moisturised, so you just, I'm just going to blend out that lip liner into my lip. So all that's done is defined them and added a little bit more colour to them. Next step, we're going to completely set the face. So today I've got a setting spray. What I'm going to do is completely drench my face. Now that I'm soaking wet, just going to try that. This is going to diffuse all of the powder products into the cream products and make them basically sit as one, all, all as one. <laughs> We're going to want this to completely dry. The final step we're going to do today is mascara. Now because I've already got false extensions on, I'm just going to be doing the bottom lashes. But I would recommend if you're not wearing any lashes to give them a quick curl and just apply your mascara as normal. Today I'm just going to be applying it to the bottom lashes. And there you go. This is how to do a natural makeup look for your next photo shoot. I think that was outstanding. Uh, Thank you. You are a natural when it comes to being in front of the camera. <laughs> so that's great. Um, I learned a lot. I hope you have also learned uh, something in the video. Uh, if you did, then give it a thumbs up. That's how you support the channel. Uh, there'll be a number of links uh, in the video at Raquel's um, Instagram. Uh, so you can check. What is it? It's Cal's Makeover on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, if it's the first time to my channel, we haven't already subscribed, then do press subscribe. Press notifications to be notified when the next video is out. I hope you enjoyed the photos. <laughs> which we haven't done yet <laughs> but we will be doing yes. shortly so you've probably already seen the photographs and um, there will be some material also that will be on Instagram and TikTok yep. and where are other socials so thanks again for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video cheers bye bye to the sky. I'm gonna roll with you till the day I die